Good afternoon, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 12. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, <clears throat> we will be reading verses 38 on to verse 45. Follow me along in the scriptures, please. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 on to verse 45. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. A sign from thee. Hold your place here. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Got to see the verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. What verse? 22. Verse 22. For the Jews... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. The Jews require a sign. Continuing at verse 39, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. <clears throat> for as Jonas was three days, Jonah, by the way, for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. <clears throat> the men of Nineveh, shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. That's not talking about the apocryphal book either. Okay? And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it also be unto this wicked generation. The generation of people who our Lord Jesus Christ was speaking on to. Okay? But he says here in verse 39 an evil and adulterous generation that the people who he was speaking to presently, okay? Seeketh after a sign and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Go to Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> Again, reiterating. Matthew chapter 16. The Pharisees also, which with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. For remember, the Jews require a sign. Okay. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. 
and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and an ad and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Sign of the prophet Jonas. Okay. Let's look at one more incident of this or occurrence. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 11. Okay. Luke chapter 11, verses 29 on to verse 35. Luke chapter 11, actually we'll read to verse 36. Verses 29 on to verse 36. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation, that generation that he was addressing when he was offering the kingdom of heaven on to them okay this is an evil generation they seek a sign and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet of jonas the prophet excuse me for as jonah was a sign unto the ninevites so shall also the son of man be to this generation The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, it greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, it greater than Jonas is here. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Wherefore, when thine eye is single, single, looking straight on, not diverted, not distracted, when your eye is single, looking at a singular source, okay? The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness, okay? The light of the body is, uh, is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If the whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light. And when the bright, and when the bright shining of a candle, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Okay? Now, looking at the sign of the prophet Jonas. Okay? Sign of the prophet Jonas. Go to John chapter 2. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. We will be reading verses 18 on to verse 21. Going to check this very interesting here. John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 21. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou do, doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? 
but he spake of the temple of his body. <clears throat> when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them, uh, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, excuse me, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said, okay? Talking about his body, the temple of his body, okay? The sign of the prophet Jonas, okay? And now go to Matthew chapter, uh, backtrack, go to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, one verse. Verse 61. Matthew chapter 26, verse 61. And this is when they were accusing our Lord Jesus Christ of doing what? Verse 61. And said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. And we just looked at John chapter 2, where he said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. See, they were looking only, they were not discerning the sign of the times, see. They were not discerning the sign of the times. That God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, their Messiah was there, offering them the kingdom of heaven. The 1,000 year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ from Jerusalem, okay? They could not see that. All they could see was the outer. They didn't have eyes to see, all right? But he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will rise it up again. And here in Matthew chapter 26, verse 61, it says, And said this fellow, they're talking about Jesus, said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. Our Lord never said that. He was talking about the temple of his body. Okay. And also Matthew chapter 27 verses 39 on verse 44. Matthew chapter 27 verses 39 on verse 44. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple. And build it, buildest it in three days. Save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. So see, they were just, they were just had in their minds about the actual physical temple. But here in John chapter 2 again, he says in verse 19, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And verse 21, but he spake of the temple of his body. See, today in this dispensation, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ is that spirit. Okay? We have to remember, remember that. Today, the temple of God are ye, not buildings. Okay? Okay? So the sign of the prophet Jonas Okay, now first let's let's hit this temple a little bit. Okay, go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 and a verse on to verse 2. Here's what the Lord said about the temple. Okay, the actual physical temple. Okay, Matthew chapter 24, verse 1 and 2. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And the same is uh, 
said in Mark chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 2. But go to Luke chapter 19. Go to Luke chapter 19. <clears throat> Luke chapter 19. We will be reading verses 41 on to verse 48. This is very key. This is very key. Okay? Luke 19, verses 41 on to verse 48. And when he, Jesus, was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, thy day, when their Messiah, when God manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body, okay? The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the body, okay? Spirit, soul, and body, okay? Saying, if thou hadst known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Verse 44. Okay. And shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children with thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Now the Romans did that and destroyed the temple in what? About 70 AD? Something like that. Okay. So that prophecy was fulfilled right there when the Romans came and destroyed the temple. Okay. Because, right here, Thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Meaning, they didn't, they didn't know, they didn't have the eyes to see. Their Messiah, God the Father, right there, offering unto them the kingdom of heaven, the 1,000 year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth, reigning from Jerusalem, see. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. They didn't have the eyes to see. Okay? They did not have the eyes to see. And now also let's look. Um, okay. Now. Let's look, look at. Beg your pardon. Let's look at Luke chapter 24. One second please. All right. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, we will be reading verses 13 on to verse 27 in Luke chapter 24. Go there, please. Luke chapter 24. Now, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The beginning of this dispensation. Okay? He was still on the earth. He, he ascended because he had already paid. He had paid for the sins. He died, buried, and rose again. He shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin. Okay? Okay? Remember in Hebrews chapter 9, it begins with the death of the testator. Okay? You look that up on your own time. Let's read this. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 on to verse 27. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, 
Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad? And the one of and the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast thou and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified, crucified him. Now look at this. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, Today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it, even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Now check this out. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken, have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Hmm. Very, 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 very interesting. Very interesting. Hmm? Now, now, go back to Luke. Go, uh, go to Luke 11. Go to Luke 11. Luke 11, 29 on to verse 39, uh, 30, uh, 36. Thank you, Mark. Let's read this again. Luke chapter 11, verses 29 on to verse 36. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. That generation that he was speaking to. Okay? The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Go to First Kings, queen of the south. Who is this queen of the south? First Kings, First Kings, chapter ten. First Kings, chapter ten. First Kings, chapter ten. We will be reading verses one on to verse thirteen. Okay, hold your place here. Hold your place here in Luke, chapter eleven. Okay, hold your place there. If you have a ribbon marker, use it. Okay? 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 13. Okay? And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, 
and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Albeit I believe not the words until I came, and mine eyes have seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Now, check this out. Blessed be the Lord thy God. Note that. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. Hinge this, okay? Hinge, verse nine, uh, verse 9 here, okay? And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices very great store, and precious stones, there came no more such abundance of spices as these which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Okay? And the navy also of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almond trees and precious stones. And the king made of the almug trees pillars for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, harps also, and psalteries for singers. There came no such almond trees, nor were seen unto this day. And King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Now, go back to Luke chapter 11. Okay, looking at verse 31. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Now, Go back to 1 Kings, okay? Now, looking at what we just looked at at 1 Kings. Are there any of you out there who are going to say that the Queen of Sheba were saved? Hmm? Are there any of you out there who are going to suggest that the Queen of Sheba was trusting on the Lord? Because, let's look right now again at verse 9. She was impressed by what she saw. Okay? She was very impressed at what she saw. Okay? Looking at verse 8. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants which stand continually before thee, and that here thy wisdom. And you have to remember, Solomon in type can be compared as a type of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? As a type. Okay? As a type. All wise, there was peace within his kingdom. Okay? Until Solomon, and then you read chapter 11. But, during the prosperous, peaceful years of King Solomon. Okay? In type can be likened unto Christ. Okay? So, where it says here in verse 8, Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Okay? Now, the generation, go back to Luke chapter 11, okay? 
verse 29 in Luke chapter 11. Okay? This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonah was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Okay? The Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, our God, their God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, was offering unto the Jewish people the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And the Jewish people, that generation should have known because they had the scriptures. They should have known who it was who was speaking unto them. But they did not. They did not. Did they? No. And the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, when she saw the prosperity, the happiness of those who served King Solomon, she was like, wow, wow. Because the people at that time rejoiced in their king, see. They rejoiced in King Solomon because of the prosperity and peace that was there, okay? They were, they were rejoicing. Prove it. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants, okay? Happy are, they, are thy men. Happy are these thy servants, okay? She saw the joy that his men and servants had under the reign of Solomon. Okay? So, when looking in Luke chapter 11, when he mentions the queen of the south will condemn the generation, the specific generation that our Lord was speaking to, it means... It means, verse 9 in 1 Kings chapter 10, Blessed be the Lord thy God, thy God, okay, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do justice and judgment. Okay? generation of the Jewish people at that time, when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, came on to them, presenting to them the kingdom of heaven, the 1,000 year reign of rule of Jesus Christ at Jerusalem, they should have seen that. They should have known that. They had the scriptures to prove it, but they were blind. Okay? They were blind. The Queen of the South, when she went to Solomon, recognized, wow, happy are thy men, happy are thy servants, because she saw everything in her breath, and she was like, wow, wow. That's what that means, okay? The Gentile, Queen of Sheba, was able to see in Solomon the prosperity, the happiness of the people who rejoiced in their king. So when he says, the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. Why? Because the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, recognized in Solomon who he was. See, and the Jews of this time, this generation, unto whom our Lord Jesus Christ was offering the kingdom of heaven unto. Okay? They should have seen it. Okay, that's what he means. The queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, saw what this generation unto whom our Lord was speaking to didn't see. Okay? It does not mean in any way, shape, or form that the queen of Sheba was trusting on the Lord. Not at all. She was able to see plainly what was there. Get it? Well, the Jews of that generation didn't. Because that's why he says, And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. God the Father. The Messiah. See, that's what he means. Okay? But now, 
now. And also you can uh, parallel that with Second uh, Chronicles 9, verses 1 on the verse 12 about the Queen of the South. Now, let's get to the good one. Let's get, get to the good one. Um, someone in a comment had mentioned this to me. And um, this was very good to look into. Very good to look into. Now, let's continue at verse 32. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Hmm. Hmm. Greater than Jonas is here. Let's go to the book of Jonah, shall we? Let's go to the book of Jonah. And on to the one who uh, mentioned this to me. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, we um, are going to have ourselves a little loving disagreement. That's okay. We can disagree. Let's say it the scriptures. The book of Jonah. The book of Jonah. Uh, we're going to read the whole book of Jonah, if you don't mind. If you do, go watch something else. Love you. The book of Jonah. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amatai, saying, hold your place, Second Kings. Go to Second Kings, chapter 14. Got to see this. Second Kings, chapter 14. The son of Amatai. Okay, Second Kings chapter fourteen. Second Kings chapter fourteen. Second Kings chapter fourteen, verse twenty-four. <clears throat> uh, actually, let's read verses twenty-three under verse twenty-four in Second Kings chapter fourteen. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Joash king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria, and reigned forty and one years. Am I, am I reading the right one to you? And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Okay, sorry about that. Let's keep reading. He restored the coast of Israel. Uh, he restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his servant Jonah, the son of Amatai the prophet, which was of Gath Hefer. Okay? Okay? Had to read that. Now go back to Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amatai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for, the, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He didn't want to do what the Lord had said for him to do. Okay? Let's continue. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God. Unto his God. Okay? These men were not Jewish. They were not Jews. They were not Hebrews. Okay? It's very important to remember that. Okay? And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. <laughs> so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. 
if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come, and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. And they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them, then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was temptuous. And he said unto them, Take me up, and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. Wherefore they cried on to the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. That had to have been pretty, pretty scary. Okay? Think about that. Ship being tossed in the sea, being just knocked around as if it were nothing. They take Jonah and whoo, 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 throw him into the sea and everything goes silent. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, feared the Lord exceedingly, and look at this, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Made a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Very important to note that. Okay? They feared the Lord and they saw this thing and they're like, wow. So what did they do because of that? And offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Okay? So, in the men in the ship, okay, it says here, they offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows after seeing that sight. What about these men? Um, could you say that these men were trusting on the Lord? Well, it says that they offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. You can easily, easily make that um, make that distinction. Yes, you could make that. Okay, you could say that. You could. Because it says right there, they offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Verse 17, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Three days and three nights, okay? Now, chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depths closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. 
Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Okay? When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it <clears throat> vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Okay? So, Jonah was in the uh, belly of the fish three, three days and three nights. Okay? And then he was brought up again. Okay? The sign of the prophet Jonas. Okay? And when our Lord was in the tomb, we read in 1 Peter that he went to those who were in Abraham's bosom. Okay? He preached to those who were in prison. Okay? And then brought those with him. Okay? From Abraham's bosom. All right? Because you read in 1 Samuel, or yeah, in 1 Samuel, when the witch at Endor the uh, Samuel was brought up, not brought down. Okay, Samuel was brought up, not brought down. Very important to get that. Why was that? Okay, because under the dispensation of the law, which this is, okay, under the dispensation of the law, okay, the way to heaven was not made plain yet. Why? Because the perfect atonement for sin was not made yet. Okay? Those who died in the Old Testament under the law before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, they went down to Abraham's bosom which is in the heart of the earth. Okay? You get that by Samuel being brought up, not brought down. Okay? Okay? So, when our Lord was in the tomb, he went down to those spirits, to those, excuse me, to those who were in Abraham's bosom. Because he had paid he had paid the price, his blood on the cross, okay? The way to heaven was now open because the perfect atonement was made for sin. Under the dispensation of the law, the blood of bulls and goats could not permanently, permanently remove sin. Only the blood of God could do that. The blood of bulls and goats only covered well, the blood of God made atonement. See? Okay? Okay? Now, now, let's continue in Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto go on Nineveh that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went in unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. It was a big city. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Okay? You need to you need to be mindful of what you're doing because judgment is coming upon them. Now let's look at what the people of Nineveh did. So the people of Nineveh believed God. What did they believe? Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Okay? So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast 
and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Right here. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Okay? And God saw their works. God saw their works. That they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. So the people of Nineveh right here in Jonah chapter 3. They feared God. Okay. It is very, it is quite. It okay, think about this. Was there anyone who witnessed Jonah being vomited out onto the land? I don't know. I don't know. Is it possible that the people of Nineveh heard of Jonah being vomited out onto the land? That is possible because keep in mind in Jonah chapter 1. Where the, where the guys right here on verse 16, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Okay. So it is very possible that the people of Nineveh heard at least of Jonah and heard of what the Lord did on the sea and quite possibly that they even saw the fish swallow up Jonah. Okay. It is quite possible. Okay, it is quite possible, but nonetheless, nonetheless, okay, and note in verse 16 in chapter 1, okay, the, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, like the people of Nineveh did, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows, and made vows, okay, and on that very Note, hold your place here, go to the book of Ruth. Go to the book of Ruth. Go to the book of Ruth. Chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 18. Okay? By the way, Ruth was a Gentile of Moab, the lineage of Lot. Okay? Ruth chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 18. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw, know me, that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left off speaking unto her. So Ruth, what did she say? What did she say in verse 16? For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. She joined herself unto the God of the Jews, the Hebrews, okay? Okay? And also, now, go to Esther. Esther chapter 8. Esther chapter 8. Esther chapter 8, verse 17. Esther chapter 8, verse 17. 
And in every providence and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Now, when you look back at uh, Jonah chapter 1, verse 16, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Does that mean that they became Jews? Not necessarily. But it says that they offered a sacrifice and made vows unto the Lord. Okay? Very important to note that. Very, 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 very important to note that. Okay? And now, going back to verse uh, chapter 3. Okay? Jonah goes and preaches a very simple warning. And Jonah began, uh, verse 4, And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, and proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Okay? They were afraid that they were going to be destroyed. Okay? And look at verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Okay? Question. Did the Ninevites in Jonah chapter 3, Trust on the Lord for their salvation. Did they? Hmm. Did they? When our Lord... Now, now go back to Luke chapter 11, verse 32. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Okay? Behold, a greater than Jonas is here. And go to Luke 24. Luke 24. Oh, no, not Luke 24. Luke 19. Excuse me. Luke 19. Luke 19. Luke 19. Verse 42. If saying, if thou hadst known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. See, again, the generation that our Lord Jesus Christ was offering the kingdom of heaven unto, they should have known, seen, and believed on the Lord, their Messiah, who was offering unto them the kingdom of heaven. Okay? They should have seen that. The men of Nineveh, okay, is it possible that they had witness unto what happened to Jonah? You can say that. Yes. Yes. Is it noted so in the scripture? No. But is it possible that that happened, that people said, hey, we just heard about this guy, this thing that happened on the sea, and we threw this Hebrew in there, and everything stopped, and hey, we, we made vows unto the Lord, and offered a sacrifice and whatnot? Yes, that is possible that word got back to the men of Nineveh. But what say at the scripture? What say at the scripture here? Verse 5 in Jonah chapter 3. So the people of Nineveh believed God, Believe God that he was going to destroy them. To destroy them. And in contrast, in Luke chapter 11, see, okay, where it says, The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Okay? A greater than Jonas is here. Obviously, because he's got the Father. Okay? Now, did 
the men of Nineveh trust on the Lord for eternal salvation, so to speak. No. They were afraid, rightfully so, of their destruction. Okay? And they repented so they would not be destroyed. Okay? And also, I, I want to call to your attention something very interesting. Go to 1 Kings. Go to 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21. Okay? Now, because the people of Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonas, does that mean that they were trusting on the Lord for their salvation? Um, no, it does not. Okay? Look at 1 Kings chapter 21, uh, verses 25 on to verse 29. In 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 25 on to verse 29. Look at this. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard those words, that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. Okay. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbate, saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. Now, what we just looked at in comparison to Jonah chapter 3. Are we to believe that Ahab trusted on the Lord? Are we to believe that? You can you can study the um, the testimony of what our Lord has given in the scriptures about King Ahab. Boop! No. Come on. Is King Ahab in heaven? Mm, no. <laughs> no. Come on. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. Okay, come on. Come on. If you were to read 1 Kings chapter 22, okay, all right, of how, no, King Ahab is not in heaven, okay? But see, the point is, the point is, Ahab humbled himself and walked softly, and the Lord honored that and didn't send the evil in his days, okay? He did not. Okay? And you got to remember, Ahab was a Jew. Okay? The Ninevites were not Jews. Now, you could reasonably say, well, maybe there were people within this time period when the Ninevites repented at the preaching of Jonah. You could say that maybe there were some that did. doesn't say so within the text, but give you that. Okay, maybe, maybe. But the point is, the point is, the people of Nineveh repented because God said he was going to overthrow Nineveh. Okay, that is why. And there is no evidence showing within what we just looked at, at chapter 3 in Jonah. There is not one shred of evidence that suggests that they were trusting on the Lord for their salvation. 
And you also have to remember too, brethren, during the dispensation of the law, eternal security was not there. Now, under the Old Testament, okay, under the law, if someone died while under the law, uh, following the law, doing what is right according to the law, they died and went down to Abraham's bosom. And those who died outside of that died and went down to hell. Okay? Okay? During the dispensation of the law, eternal security was not there. People were not sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go. I'm going to link in this video in the description box a uh, video uh, debunking the faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Why? Okay? If someone went to Abraham's bosom when our Lord, when he was in the tomb, came down to those as like, paid the price. I paid for it. We're going up because the way is open now because I shed my blood on the cross, made a perfect atonement for sin. Let's go. Yes, they're in heaven. But until they had died, there was no eternal security back then during this dispensation under the law when Jonah was written and whatnot. Eternal security sealed was not there. Okay? It was not. It was not there. So, to say that the Ninevites were trusting on the Lord for their eternal salvation is not an accurate thing to say in and of itself. Okay? Because eternal security was not there. It almost sounds as if to say that the Ninevites were trusting on the Lord for their eternal salvation, it is almost to say, it sounds like giving uh, giving credence on to that eternal security was in the time of the law. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Okay? Now, then again, did they, did those of the Gentiles who did trust in um, the Lord and wanted to be right with him, did they all convert to Judaism? Let's, let's, uh, Let's look at that, okay? Let's look at that, okay? Let's look at that. But first, first, let's read Jonah chapter 4, okay? Let's read Jonah chapter 4. Okay? Picking up at uh, Jonah chapter 3, verse 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth thee of the evil. Jonah kind of figured, it's like, okay, if I go tell these people that unless they repent of their wicked ways, God's going to destroy you. Okay? Beloved, Jonah chapter 3, the people of Nineveh repented out of fear of destruction. Not that they were seeking to be right with the Lord or to follow the Lord as did the men in Jonah chapter 1 verse 16. It's not there in the text. It is not there. Okay? The men of Nineveh here in Jonah chapter 3, rightfully so, they were afraid. They feared the Lord. They believed Him. Of course. Yes. Does that mean that they were trusting on him and following him? 
No. But see, that generation where our Lord, hold, hold on one second, hold on, where it says in Luke, hold your place there in Jonah, where it says in Luke chapter 11, verse 32, the men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The men of Nineveh with that specific generation would say unto that generation, you know, uh, God was going to destroy us, okay, and we took him seriously, okay? That generation, the, the men of Nineveh could say of that generation, your God, your promised king, the son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was right there in front of you, offering you the kingdom of heaven, and you didn't see it? Hey, Jonah came to us and warned that we were going to be overthrown. We took him seriously. And yet, the son of David, your promised king, is right there offering you the kingdom of heaven, and you didn't see it? That's what he's saying there. Okay? Not that the people of Nineveh trusted on the Lord, or follow the Lord even. Okay? Okay? Now, the repentance of the Ninevites, did that last? Was it an ongoing thing? We'll get to that in a minute. But let's, let's read, let's finish Jonah chapter 4, okay? Verse 3, picking up at verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me. For it is better for me to die than to live. Then said the Lord, doest thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. And there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, and he fainted and wished in himself to die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. And look at what the Lord does, just putting his finger on the one thing, like our Lord does. And God said to Jonah, Do us thou well to be angry for the Lord? And look at Jonah's response. And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. Notice how he said, uh, our Lord points out the gourd, but oh, watch this. I love this. I love this. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest grow, madest it grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. And should I not spare Nineveh, or Nineveh, excuse me, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle? Our Lord's mercy. Yes, our Lord's mercy was there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he said, should I not spare Nineveh? Hmm? Because they repented? They did. Yes, they repented of the evil. Because they were afraid of our Lord destroying them. Okay? But did that fear of their destruction lead on to a turning to where they adhered themselves onto the statutes, precepts, and commandments of our Lord? On that, on that, go to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. 
Isaiah chapter 14. We're going to read one verse in Isaiah chapter 14. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, Israel. Okay? To the house of Israel. Now, this has a fulfillment within the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven. Okay, but right there. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now go to uh, Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. We will be reading verses 1 on verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Speaking of the coming of the Messiah, the Son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the Son of Man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also of the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. So wait. The stranger, not of Israel, keeping the Sabbath and taking hold and taketh hold of the covenant. There are those out there that argue and say that during the Old Testament times, not one Gentile ever um was made right with the Lord. No Gentile made it to heaven when our Lord Jesus Christ uh, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and uh, made the uh, payment for sin when he went down there into Abraham's bosom because it's Abraham's bosom, right? There are those out there who say that not one Gentile made it under the Old Testament. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that, okay? I don't believe that. I think there were some Gentiles back then under the law that did, okay? Because you also got to remember, too, the Jew was the example onto all nations of how to be right with the Lord and how to love the Lord and to follow him, okay? Okay? We have to remember that. We have to remember that. And if someone wanted to be right with the Lord and to follow him, how would they do that? Let's continue reading, okay? Verse 7. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. Okay? Beside those that are gathered unto him. Now, Isaiah 56, okay, is also 
within future prophecy. Okay? But there were those of the strangers that joined themselves on to Israel. Okay? Did they have to keep the law and that kind of stuff? Let's continue. Go to 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8, the Sermon of Solomon. First Kings chapter 8, verses 41 on to verse 43. First Kings chapter 8, verses 41 on to verse 43. Moreover, concerning the stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, uh, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all the that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee, as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. We have to remember unto the Jews was were given the covenants, the oracles. Yes. Yes, we have to remember that. But what about someone who was a stranger? Okay? Who loved the Lord, who feared the Lord, right? What about them? Go to Second Kings now, chapter 17. Second Kings chapter 17. This is very interesting right here. This right here, Second Kings chapter 17. We will be reading verses 24 on to verse 28. Okay? Second Kings chapter 17. Verses 24 on to verse 28. Check this out. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, and from Kutha, and from Ava, and from Hamath, and from Sepharvah, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there, that they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed, and placed in the cities of Samaria, know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Let's read verse 29. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And then if you were to continue reading um, 2 Kings chapter 17 here, you would see that it says they feared the Lord, but they they followed their own gods. Okay, they were giving lip service unto the Lord while still going after their own pagan gods. See, okay, yeah, they feared the Lord. They were afraid of him, yes, but yet their heart wasn't there. Okay, very very. Very important thing to remember. The heart wasn't there. They did the lip service. They went through the motions. Right? But the heart wasn't there. The heart wasn't there. Ahab. He feared the Lord because the Lord was going to, of what he said to him. And he humbled himself. And the Lord saw that. And withheld the judgment upon Ahab. Okay? He did. 
was Ahab's heart with the Lord. Mut, obviously not. Those men in Jonah, go back to Jonah, okay? Go back to Jonah. Those men in Jonah, come on, Brad. Beg your pardon, brother. Go back to Jonah. Okay. Go back to Jonah. Jonah chapter 3. Okay. These men, the people in Jonah chapter 3. In their heart. From what we saw in Jonah chapter 3. Okay. Okay. So the uh, verse five. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from all, from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way. Ahab turned from his evil way and walked uh, softly. Okay? Does that mean that the heart was there with him? With the Lord? No. 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 No, no, no. Okay? Okay? But let man and beast, verse 8, be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away his fierce anger that we perish not. And just like what they have in verse 10, when he saw their works, he repented of it. Okay, but in contrast to that, in Jonah chapter 1, verse 16, the men, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice and made vows. These men who witnessed firsthand, you know, tossing Jonah over and like uh, seeing that with their own eyes, greatly feared the Lord. But the evidence within that verse suggests unto us that not only did they fear the Lord, but their hearts went out to him. Where, you know, they want, they, it says right there, they offered the sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Okay? Because it said they called unto their gods, little G, in uh, Jonah chapter 1. But then they asked Jonah to call on the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. So to say that the people of Nineveh, because of the repenting of Jonah, followed the Lord? No, no. They repented because they were afraid of being destroyed. Yes, but was their heart with them? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because the ultimate answer onto that is what do you do with the book of Nahum? Nahum. The book of Nahum, which was chronologically after the repentance that the people of Nineveh did under Jonah. It didn't last long. Why? Because the people of Nineveh, their, their heart was not the Lord's. They only did that as an eye service because they get rightly so. They feared their destruction. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. They feared being destroyed. But did they, were their hearts unto the Lord? Looking at Nea, Nehu. Looking at Nahum, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkoshite. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. 
The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Verse 3, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind, and in the storm whirlwind, the whirlwind that he answered uh, Job out of the whirlwind, and the storm, the storm on the sea with Jonah, okay? Okay? And the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea, and maketh it dry, and drieth up the rivers. Bashan languisheth, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down with him, by him. Okay? This is against Nineveh, which repented at the preaching of Jonas. Okay? And then we're not going to read the whole, uh, whole book of Nahum. But, okay, looking at Nahum chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Woe to the bloody city. What city is that? Verse 1 in chapter 1. The burden of Nineveh. The book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite. Chapter 3. Woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and the prancing of horses and of the jumping of chariots. Okay? So the repentance did not last within Nineveh, okay? It did not last. Hence, people of Nineveh, their hearts were not truly after the Lord, okay? Remember what the Lord said in uh, Samuel. Does he have uh, delights in bulls and sacrifices, but that rather you obey his word? Just totally paraphrase that, beg your pardon, okay? Okay? The obedience unto the scriptures. Especially during the dispensation of the law. Okay? Obedience unto the scriptures. Unto his word. Okay? That you obey. Alright? That the heart was with him. People of Nineveh, their heart was not with him. They rightly so, again, feared the wrath of the Lord, but their hearts were not with him. You look at today. There are many people that claim to be afraid of the Lord, but is their heart with them? With him? Hmm? Oh, I fear the Lord. Yeah, if you fear the Lord, is your heart his as well? See? 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 So, to say that the people of Nineveh were trusting on the Lord because of the pro uh, preaching of Jonas, no. No, 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 no. Now, also, we have to remember this, too, okay? We also have to remember this, too. Go to, go to, uh, Matthew chapter 23. Go to Matthew chapter 23. Okay. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. We will be reading verses 13 on to verse 15. Okay. Now, doctrinally, this was still under the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was offering unto the Jews the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ from Jerusalem. Okay? 
Uh, Matthew chapter 23, verses 13 on to verse 15. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Okay? Now we have to remember that the Jews were dispersed. Yes. Yes. But also remember what it says. Where is that? Where is that? In Acts chapter 15, after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 15. We, brethren, we have to remember. Okay? <laughs> we have to remember. Um, the Jews were seeking converts. Okay? The Jews were seeking converts. We have to remember that. Okay? We have to remember that. Okay? Acts chapter 15, verse 21. Okay? After the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 15, verse 21. One verse. We have to remember this. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Okay? Now, Gentiles were not allowed into the temple. But in the synagogues, that's a different story. Okay? Synagogue, temple, two different things. Okay? Thing to remember about that in Acts chapter 15. That was after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, this current dispensation. Okay? But they were seeking converts. You got to remember that in Deuteronomy, a testimony unto all the nations of how the Jews were adhering to the statutes and judgments of our Lord in the promised land. Okay? You have to remember that. And people uh, outside of Israel saw that. What if they wanted to join themselves onto that? Okay? Some of you might be saying, well, what about Romans chapter 2? What about Romans chapter 2? Let's go there. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Okay? First thing about Romans chapter 2. Okay? Romans chapter 2. Is this before or after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ? Okay? We know that. Okay? The dispensational difference. We have to remember, okay? We have to remember the dispensational difference, okay? Now, we will read in Romans chapter 2, verses 12 on to close of the chapter. In Romans chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Okay? For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law, the law of Moses, okay, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Why is that? Because the, the law of God is written in every man's heart. Whether you want to accept that or not, it's there. Okay? Whether you want to accept that or not. Let's continue. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, but 
I should have just shut up and let your word speak for you. Sorry. Okay. Their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Aha! Very important there. Let's keep reading. Behold, thou art called a Jew and restest in the law and makest thy boast of God and knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law and are confident that thou thyself art a guide to the blind, a light to them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hath the form which has the form of knowledge and of the truth of the law, and of the truth in the law. Therefore, thou therefore which teacheth an teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Okay? Now, for circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Why is that? Why was that? Okay? Because circumcision was um, given unto Abraham. Okay? Circumcised himself, Ishmael, and his son Isaac. Okay? It was an outward sign of the covenant. Right? Symbolic unto the law. Okay? Circumcision. Okay? Doesn't mean that his, that his circumcision physically was made uncircumcision. Right? Unless they sowed it, but whatever, okay? Whatever. Dispensational difference here, okay? Dispensational difference. Let's keep reading. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision thus transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Okay? Remember King Ahab? Okay? Remember King Ahab? Who no doubt was circumcised? Okay? Remember that? Okay? But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, the Old Testament law, the law of Moses, whose praise is not of men, but of God. See, this is addressing the dispensational difference, okay? Under the law, you were going to follow the Lord. You had to be circumcised, okay? Today, in this dispensation, to be right with God, to be saved, to stay right with God, you do not need to be circumcised to the Jew first and also to the Greek. See? Okay? Okay? But see, it was in this dispensation. Okay? That's for this dispensation. But see, also what he's addressing, also back then in the Old Testament, under the dispensation of the law, okay? Did you remember we looked at the guys in Jonah who feared the Lord and did a sacrifice and made vows, okay? Okay, because the circumcision was given on to the Jews, right? Right? It was, a, it was a sign for the Jews of their covenant, okay? 
But for those who are not of the Jews, the strangers under the law, okay, were they to get circumcised? There's no evidence to suggest that. But the law of God, okay, the sacrifices, the offerings, the testimonies and stuff like that, okay? You see? You see? So, there again, the people of Nineveh would condemn that generation which our Lord was talking to in Genesis, in Genesis, in Luke chapter 11, because they feared the Lord and did what his prophets said. Here, God the Father, their Messiah, son of David, was right there in front of them. And they did nothing except back him. That's what they did. That's what they did. Hence, the sign of the prophet Jonas. Okay? Okay? So, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this answers um, some questions, if you had any about them. And uh, like I said, um, the, the people of Nineveh, when they repented at the preaching of Jonas, okay, were their hearts with the Lord as the men in Jonah chapter 1? There was no evidence in the scriptures that we looked at, okay? And plus, the book of Nahum. Less than a hundred years later, God's warning uh, Nineveh again, calling it a bloody city, okay? So, yeah, the men of Nineveh at that time, no, they, they were not trusting on the Lord for their eternal salvation during the, uh, during, under the law. They were not. They were not. They feared the Lord uh, because they were afraid of his wrath and destruction. There was no evidence that they had any love for the Lord. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. And we looked at Ahab who clearly uh, had no love for the Lord, but feared the Lord, obviously. Okay, what about Ahab? So, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully, this is helpful. Hopefully. And thank you on to uh, the one who uh, commented of that. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I really enjoyed myself going through the scriptures looking at that. Okay, I, I really did. I really did. Um, I really did. Um, thank you. Um, like I said, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching if you do. May our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. See you in the next video.